Um, we're going to take a little uh, step backwards. And the next, this talk is on coronary angiography. And this is the procedure that, uh, in essence, revolutionized the treatment of heart patients, ultimately gave birth to coronary bypass surgery, ultimately gave birth to coronary uh, intervention. So it's worth looking back at uh, 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 coronary angiography. Um, the first coronary angiogram was a, uh, a, a classic mistake that gave rise to a, a classic uh, revolution in medicine. Dr. Mason Soans at the Cleveland Clinic was doing an aortic root injection with a straight catheter. Inadvertently, that catheter was sitting in the right coronary artery. He injected 30 cc's of dye under pressure in the right coronary artery. Uh, patient's heart stopped for about uh, 30 seconds, but he got the most beautiful right coronary arteriogram ever recorded. And what makes a, one person a genius is that he realized that he made a horrible mistake. However, he realized the potential of doing what he inadvertently did. And so he went on to develop uh, coronary angiography. And uh, you, you know that it's become one of the most commonly performed procedures today. It took uh, almost 10 years for Melvin Judkins to change the, uh, the profile of coronary angiography. Uh, it took a lot more skill with the Mason Soans technique, which was done from the uh, arm with fairly straight catheters. Uh, Judkins designed some preformed catheters. And interestingly, even though it's 40 years later, or 40 years, 40 plus years later, uh, that we've used virtually the same shapes that were designed by Judkins in 1967. There are numerous approaches to coronary angiography. Uh, Sohn started the brachial approach. It's still used less and less. Uh, it could be done via uh, cut down arteriotomy or percutaneous. Uh, the femoral approach has been the standard over the past uh, uh, several decades. It's usually quick. It's uh, uh, fairly easy. You have multiple preformed catheters that you could use for unusual anatomy. Uh, it's easily to convert to a, a PCI. And uh, the only real issues are that patients with iliac disease or iliofemoral disease, uh, it's a lot more complicated and sometimes undoable. Uh, radial artery approach has uh, come a long way. I, in my career, I've seen the coming and going of this approach uh, twice before. Uh, now it looks like the technology is so much better and it's uh, growing in, uh, in, in approach, and you've heard several uh, comments on uh, radial artery approach for standard, for standard angiography, as well as for uh, intervention. Complications of coronary angiography have really uh, become fewer and fewer over time. It's estimated that one in a thousand deaths will occur in the elderly, the elderly defined as 70 years or older, uh, one in 3,000 or one in 5,000 in the younger patients. Uh, strokes are very infrequent, but still occur. Usually the mechanism is either air injected or a clot in the catheter or dislodgement of a plaque or a clot from the aorta as the artery, as the catheter is being uh, wheeled around the, the arch. Uh, the more common uh, complications are femoral artery complications. Uh, this really led to the current rise in uh, radial artery approach. Uh, femoral artery complications have become fewer and fewer, but still amount to about one half to one percent of uh, procedures. Contrast 
uh, complications, including acute kidney injury, uh, are inevitable in, in many patients. Uh, there's very little we can do other than hydrate patients that have a major impact. Certain dyes uh, may be a little less likely, but never uh, certain uh, uh, strategies other than hydration have proven useful. Uh, coronary artery dissection. Uh, catheters today have uh, softer tips, rubber tips in many uh, catheters. Uh, and the coronary artery dissection for diagnostic angiography is uh, extraordinarily rare. The anatomy of the aortic root is important. You all uh, understand this. Uh, there are three sinuses. There's the right sinus of Valsalva, in which the right coronary artery arises. There's the left sinus of Valsalva, in which the left coronary uh, ostium arises, and one of the best named structures of the body is the posterior or non coronary uh, sinus. And uh, if you f find a case with a coronary arising from there, it's a reportable case. It's truly well named. We use the CAS system for anatomic classification of. Uh, the coronary artery segments and branches. And this has become important in things like the syntax score. Uh, it's become important in standardization of reporting for registries, et, et, et cetera. Coronary artery, by appearance, looks very complicated. By In reality, it is not. And what I uh, would like to illustrate here is the fact that as complicated as the branches are and as variable as the branches are, there are some very simple rules. One rule is for the left coronary artery, if you want to see the left anterior descending, focus on the cranial branches, on the cranial views. AP, right anterior oblique cranial, left anterior oblique cranial, as shown on the left side of uh, your screen. This really uh, brings out the left anterior descending. It does not help us with the circumflex system. And so we have the other side of the body, the caudal views, and the caudal uh, views uh, give us the circumflex uh, system very beautifully. Again, three of uh, the caudal views. Mick, see which one gives you the best. And uh, between the cranial for the LAD, caudal for the circumflex, those are the uh, basic rule of the uh, left coronary artery. The right coronary artery is a little simpler. The body of the right coronary artery you see best in an LAO view. The branches you see best in the views that profile the right coronary artery. This would be the RAO uh, view. We use a lot of the cranial views, LAO cranials, which show not only the body but also the, uh, the branches quite well. A major limitation of coronary angiography that you really have to recognize because it bites you quite often and that is that it is a luminogram, it's not an arteriogram. It shows the channel in which the dye is flowing, but it doesn't show the artery, and that's an important thing to always remember. On the left is uh, an artery, and there should be a little red spot in the middle of this, in which there's diffuse disease, but the lumen is in the center. And if you project, you see that lumen, uh, this should be a little red spot here. If you project, you see the artery on the x-ray image. Patients can have extremely diffuse and severe generalized coronary artery disease, 
and still appear to have what's called normal or non-obstructive coronary disease. And I remember one of my first experiences many years ago was a young guy that had what looked like stretched out vessels, ejection fraction 20%. We thought it was a non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. He died, his autopsy showed 70 plus percent stenosis in every coronary artery. And yet you look at his arteriograms and you would not be able to see an obstructive lesion. On the right side of the screen is a uh, uh, probably even a more common situation, and that's where you have an eccentric lesion, and you can see that uh, if your projection is here to the screen, and this is your lumen, you see a pretty nice appearance of a coronary artery. If your projection is from up here, let's say this is a cranial view, you also see what looks like a nice appearance of a coronary artery. If your projection was here, then you would get a true representation. This is why we do multiple views, and generally the worst view is probably the correct view. If you see something that looks like 70% in one view and 20% in another view, that 20% is, is misleading. That 70% would indicate maybe not a 70% lesion, but a significant, at least angiographically significant stenosis. Some strategies. Uh, now we are seeing so many of the coronary artery bypass operations that have been done uh, since the uh, 60s and 70s. Left internal mammary is located inferiorly in the subclavian, but also anteriorly. So catheters, if you're trying to find it on the bottom of that artery, sometimes you have to rotate it a little bit to get that anterior orientation. We use right coronary artery catheters, but Lima catheters are often necessary. They have a sharper hook and could catch that uh, better. It's important, the most common issue with the Lima is the distal anastomosis, and the best views for seeing that are lateral views or very steep left anterior oblique views. In almost every other view, it overlaps the anastomosis uh, itself, and you could miss a significant stenosis. And again, it's important, the lemur is just a conduit, the coronary artery is what causes the symptoms, so visualization of the distal vessel is uh, critical. For uh, right coronary saphenous vein grafts, best view is the left anterior oblique, sometimes uh, the takeoff is straight downward and you need a straight catheter like a multi-purpose rather than the preformed uh, right. Again, it's important to visualize the branches of the, of the right, so don't focus on just the bypass itself. One of the things that uh, uh, fellows have the most trouble with is finding the bypasses. And there is a hierarchy that surgeons have used since the time that they started doing it. And this is to avoid crisscrossing uh, the bypasses. So the lowest on the totem pole will be the anterior descending, and that goes straight anterior to the LAD. And then sequentially, the other bypasses that are placed to the diagonals would be a little above it, the ramus above that, obtuse marginal above it, and the posterolateral lateral of the circumflex above that. And this is the only way those bypasses can be placed without crisscrossing. And so if you're doing a study and you know the patient has four vein grafts, all you have to do is find one and know which one it goes to, and then you look for the others above and below. They'll be almost in a, uh, uh, in a straight line for the first operation. Other common problems are poor opacification. Uh, Usually this is a problem with obese patients, but also situations with high coronary flow, uh, aortic valve disease, anemia, AV malformations, uh, not such ideal equipment, and suboptimal injections. 
a little bit more of a problem with smaller catheters than with uh, the larger caliber uh, catheters. Uh, the obesity, in addition, limits your angulation. And what I found is that best views for the really obese patients are the cranial AP and caudal views. When you try to get too much oblique angle, you get liver and stomach and uh, uh, more chest in it. But you could generally see most of the LAD and CERC system very well in, in these fairly, in, in these essentially AP uh, views. Partial fixes if you have poor pacification. Uh, sometimes you need a, a larger catheter. Uh, same French, but a guiding catheter gives you better dive flow. Higher frame rates, 30 frames per second instead of the standard 15 frames, gets a better definition. Less angulation, as I mentioned, for the obese patient, and a more hearty uh, injection. Other uh, common uh, mistakes are failure to assess what you've done before stopping the procedure. There's nothing worse than looking at your study afterwards and saying, gosh, I wish I had done another view. I really don't see that well. What am I going to tell the patient? So you're always assuming kidneys are uh, functioning adequately. You're always better taking more views than fewer. Uh, you may uh, think that it's uh, macho to get done with a case in five minutes, but you're better off taking more time reviewing your films, making sure that you see everything, and in particular problems with uh, uh, proximal LAD, which often overlaps with circumflex. You need steeper cranial views. Uh, proximal circumflex, same issue. Uh, inadequate visualization of the ostia of branches. Very common site of the plaque buildup and often uh, uh, covered up by the fact that the branch comes off not perpendicular to where you're visualizing. Sometimes we uh, think uh, vessels are occluded because we don't see them particularly the case with the uh, high anterior origin of the right coronary and anomalous circumflex, the most common anomaly we think the circumflex is small or, or occluded. And then uh, collaterals are important to assess, particularly if one's thinking about uh, uh, what, to, uh, what a surgeon might have an opportunity to bypass. So take your time, longer injections, and more dye to visualize then. This is uh, sort of a broad brush of coronary angiography, and uh, uh, hope, uh, hope it was informative. Thank you.